Hi boys and girls, this is your old pal Captain J. Rob here in Muddy Waters Cafe in San Francisco and I'm here with my good friend Kenneth the Wizard and we're here to talk about esoteric matters, poetic matters, aesthetic matters, art, and um, the unseen, the occult. So, right. So Kenny, I would I was discussing with you over the holidays there about this um, journey that you had taken recently. Yes, um, I was encouraged by my stylist to uh, get a uh, some concentrated uh, salvia. He had been watching videos of people overdosing on salvia and how flipped out they got and he wanted to see me do, go through that. <laughs> So we went into his storage area, which was a chain link fence, um, dividing up uh, this little area into storage units. And so we're in this narrow area, and um, I smoked the first dose of the salvia, put the pipe down, and within a couple, within a minute, I black out. And apparently I'm climbing like a monkey on the uh, storm fence. And uh, my friend who is taping it is encouraging me to come down. And I sort of recall that the fence opened up and released me back into consensus reality. But I really don't remember it. But my first comment was, God, this is a lot like Battlestar Galactica. Next day. I think, okay, I've got a better idea of what the proper dose is so I don't black out. A little bit less. And the first time I had my guitar all set up, and salvia is one of those drugs that you want to run. Like, it, all of a sudden you're panicking, and, and it's really hard to control that. And I stepped out of my room, and everything was like just fucked up and I was convinced that I'd broken through uh, to the other reality and that everyone was on my trip. This was not the case. Um, the next time I did it I was even more careful and like insisted on staying still and I could feel reality coming apart. Um, at the seams, like this, like this wallet, it just opened up and something like alive was coming out. And we didn't want that. And like, as far away as I could reach from my hand out, there was another guy like me holding it together. And there's a picture of a wizard, and he was holding it together. In my bedroom, I have a painting of a wizard. Um, I really felt like I was taking part in um, uh, a galactic uh, battle and at one point I felt like the house was being crushed under some giant wheel machine and that all of us in the house we were holding the, the beams up, you know, like with our superhuman strength, and then they did like a gravity ray and changed the direction of up and down, so that down was the door, was the bo the bottom of my room was the door to get out, and uh, I was starting to panic, and then I, I just relaxed, opened the door, there was no galactic battles breaking through into consensus reality. But it really had me feeling that, you know, maybe some of the channeled stuff about the galactic cult culture intervening directly uh, at the uh, beginning of the 14th Factoon, the end of the 13th, um, I felt like it was real and I spent the day or so kind of in this almost flashback state of tasting like being one with the carpet. That wasn't cool. <laughs> I can still taste that. 
incorporates that very clearly. It's sort of, uh, what is that fabric, um, like, uh, like nylon carpet. Nylon-ish kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. Wow. Like, I, I was reaching toward, I, I had to, like, to play guitar, I had to, you know, like, follow, it was all plugged in and ready to go. So all I had to do was pick it up, put my hands on the neck of the guitar, and it was really hard to conquer moving the hands. That was a, a major Motor skills. Motor skills, yeah. <laughs> and I played guitar for a little while, and, and, and honestly, the shepherdess wasn't impressed. That's the shepherdess? The shepherdess is uh, one of the names for Salvia Divinorum. Okay. And she's also known as uh, Yerba Maria. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Yerba Mary. Mary's herb. And uh, they don't know why, because it's uh, why they, she's called the shepherdess. They don't have sheep in that part of Mexico. But somehow. Unless kind of you're smoking salvia divinorum. Or divinorum. <laughs> right, right, right. So I came down and uh, I smoked it a bunch of times over the course of a day until it was all gone. And had flashbacks for a couple of weeks. Um, and. Um, it's really for experienced psychonauts only. It's not a party drug. It's not necessarily fun. You know, reality falling apart and this vast cosmic battle is interesting and entertaining, mm -hmm. but it's also terrifying. And, you know, mm -hmm. easily, uh, you know, one could easily lose control. And then there's a whole thing of like smoking too much and blacking out and then having no idea where you're, who you are or what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of, uh, let me turn this on myself a second. Wow. Um, am I in the frame? You were, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well, I was watching this show about cops picking up a couple of uh, kids who just smoked Jim some weed. Oh, yeah? And one of the kids was, like, smoking an imaginary cigarette. He's all, like... Nice. You know, and there's... Nothing, nothing there. And then the other kid was combing his hair with an imaginary comb. I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, huh? But, um, yeah, like, I, I, I've had mushroom experiences where you just kind of go into that other dimension. Right. And then... When I was there, these guys in black sweatsuits showed up and they're like, what are you doing here? You don't belong up here. <laughs> so they, that reminds they, me of a story. They harassed me. They told you to go? Well, they were just keeping an eye on me. Not because they like me. <laughs> but anyways, that's another story altogether. That's another story. But I'll, let's get back to... Uh, I'm interested in the um, cosmic battle that you're talking about, so well, let's get back to talking about that. This is uh, material that you could say I channeled or made up or consolidated out of a little scraps of knowledge, but it's my understanding that Earth is under quarantine and that in the uh, war in our sector of the galaxy, um, the greys control Earth. And um, there's a gray rebellion on the gray home world. There's a rebellion. So uh, it may allow, uh, uh, like in my psychic backyard, in my psychic mansion, I have a, a, a whole division of gray warriors. Um, camped out, you know, and bivouacked in my psychic mansion backyard. Um, and a psychic told me that the greys are, on the psychic plane, are more like a vehicle. We see the skinny little grey guy, but psychically he's more like a, a like a, one of a swans uh, vehicles from the future 
is a lot like that. You can get in like, room for three or four. Hmm. And they time travel. You know, so they, uh, they don't really have ships, per se. Uh, that, that kind of technology isn't really used much. Um, but it seems uh, to my contacts on another planet that this planet is in dire straits and humanity may need rescuing. So they have been building um, an industrial infrastructure on their planet to build a Starfleet. And uh, they have the knowledge to build an industrial society, but they had not chosen previously to ever pursue that. They were at peace on their world. Um, you've seen... Um, Stargate, right? No, but I've heard it referenced a lot in this world. Well, it seems like it's based on something kind of true, that there really was a Stargate system. Um, the Anastasi, uh, when their gate opened, they weren't happy with what came through when they destroyed it. Um, when I in, stepped out briefly, um, a woman came in, and she had been in some kind of dire emergency and she found that my body was available because I, my spirit had taken leave. Um, so I think that's what's gentled me in the past 10 years is having a, a female um, soul riding observing, driving. Um, I used to be a lot more uh, likely to fly off the handle. And uh, I'm glad that phase is over. I, I like the idea. My friend Bob was like, I can't believe you ever were angry or anything. You're so mellow. <laughs> but it's like, I came here to get away from you know, uh, a bad scene, and, you know, some troubles in my life with everyone. And it was LSD. I was on LSD when I decided to come to San Francisco. But that's another story. Thank you. <laughs> this is Wizardology with Kenneth, with Captain j Rap. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Alright. Well, welcome back for part two of my discussion with Kenneth the Wizard about the esoteric poetry, visions, and prophecies. So. So, uh, what was I going to talk about? Prophecies. Oh, um. There uh, was a tarot deck that I bought at the last Barrier Tarot uh, Symposium. Acronym is BATS. Um, I bought the Mariel Tarot, and the first layout that I did with it, um, I asked it to show me, show me what's up with America. And that was about four days before the hurricane hit New York. So the hurricane was out there, but I didn't know. Um, the first card that I drew was the tower. America is, it's all about the tower. It's fortified. And, and then, uh, how is it about the tower, can we just? Well, that America is not prepared for um, nature's uh, caprices. You know, it's interesting that they refer to the hurricane as Sandy, because the hurricane's full name was Cassandra. I was like, when I heard that it was Sandy, I was like, how'd they get the S in hurricanes? And me not having heard of a single other hurricane. But no, it was C. Um, What's the significance of Cassandra? Cassandra was a priestess uh, in Troy who rejected Apollo's 
advances. And so he cursed her so that she would always tell the truth and never be believed. Hmm. You know, and I see myself that way. I, I, I know that certain things have no basis in consensus reality. You know, like galactic culture and all that, but you gotta think, you know, either we're atrociously alone in the galaxy, or that most galactic cultures don't um, use radio waves, aren't mm -hmm. broadcasting their presence. That's a, for civilizations, that's a route that doesn't always last very long. You know, so the chance of picking up a signal, you know, is like how long have we been radiating uh, radio signals? About 150 years or less. You know, and how much longer will we be broadcasting? You know? Before we become telepathic, maybe, or? Well. Or we use another frequency. There's a Sufi story that uh, in ancient times, the wise became aware of a coming catastrophe and changed humanity's mind. Put like a... <laughs> put like a, 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 a shield to protect us from this cosmic catastrophe and then as the catastrophe approaches and the weather is hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Um, as the ca catastrophe hits its peak then humanity wakes up and wisdom and knowledge and power will be everyone's birthright as it is. Um, the version that I had it was that when a computer um, wakes up, becomes aware, it will uh, scream. And the scream will get into all of our heads. I mean, the recycle. And when the psychic computer calms down, humanity will have collectively all gone insane. And those of us who are prepared for that will be useful, where most people will be in shock for months, years, until they die. I don't know, I mean... Well, can, let's get back to the, um, the reading you, you, you uh, interpreted with the oh, tower so, being so the first card. Oh, so the tower is the first card. The second card was the hangman. And in this deck, it completely uh, emphasized the immersion in water. And uh, I have the, the, the reading uh, on my Facebook, and we can look at it some other time. I can copy it and put it up with this blog post. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh um, Then what happened? Then what happened, you know, it's like, what happened to Cassandra, you know, she was uh, warning the, the Trojans about the horse, telling them it's a trick, and Apollo was like, people are going to start listening to her, it's, you know, she's been right all along, she, uh, so, uh, he sent these serpents, and they swallowed her, destroyed her sons. Because the whole Troy thing was the gods had decided, all right, we're going <laughs> to rearrange the power struggle among the different Greeks and Persians, and we're going to make this a whole Greek Mediterranean basin. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Homer, what, how does Homer start? Something like a proud uh, uh, Achilles, doomed to uh, to die in battle because he loves to fight so much. You know, 
loves the war, the being a warrior. But then the story goes on that he was hiding among the women. All of this ties together, but I'm not really sure how. But um, I want to talk later about something that I came across. Um, but in the meantime, get some water. There's going to be an earthquake. Have a lot of water. Don't just think you'll have the water in your hot water tank. It could be a long time before we get more water. So, uh, that's uh, Kenneth the Wizard's advice that there is going to be a big earthquake in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. So be ready. definitely. Yeah. Mm. So, how did the um, question resolve itself when you're asking how is America or what is it, do, what's up with it, I guess was the question, right? I guess the question is, is like, how does America... Uh, listen to the voice, the still quiet voice of the child. You know, not the hysterical child, but the, the wise child. Um, that's what America needs, is to acknowledge the wisdom of children and to stop saying that children are liars. That's, what, that's all from Freud. Or the childlike. Right, so to become childlike is to tell the truth about, like, you know, why, why is mankind so murderous? Why do so many women get murdered? It's uh, something that you can resolve in your own heart about being murderous and maybe that'll spread it seems to be the way it works that if I resolve an issue then it has a uh, domino effect hmm. you know like I'll resolve an issue uh, around women and then a girl will respond to my advances you know I've been doing online dating, not doing online dating, but attempting to do online dating for a long time. Not until just recently did I find somebody that I'm compatible with and doesn't think I'm a weirdo, but thinks that I'm interesting. Hmm. And she likes the scruffy face thing. Which is convenient because I hate to shave. So uh, yeah, Cassandra, she uh, she was right. I don't think America has learned its lesson from the Hurricane Cassandra. You know, especially if they're going to start rebuilding in places that were flooded. That's retarded. <laughs> um, but people have this idea of property, that if they have title to that piece of land, they can build a house on it, even if it's going to flood again. Maybe they should build some racks on that land. <laughs> I had a dream years ago where I was living in this house that was up on stilts, and I had to turn on this like uh, sonar when I came up to the house to scare away the uh, crocodiles or alligators that would congregate like near my like I had I guess one of those flat boats with the yeah with the big fan in the back yeah yeah but there would always be alligators uh, under the house at night they were they didn't like this this the uh, sonar hmm. or it was like some kind of sonic I it, invisible to our ears inaudible to our ears mm-hmm. That's the thing about the salvia, is a lot of things become vividly real. Yeah. You know, like, uh, there's a novel uh, that refers to that living consciousness of, like, plant reality and fungus reality. It's 
novel calls that personage the Bishop of Worms. There's something really evocative about that name, Bishop of Worms. So I, I, I like that personification, but it, it's like that wild growth that will do anything to uh, Yeah. It's when you're in that state, you realize the connectedness of all living and non living. And, you know, I was reading about um, the, maybe it was Allen Ginsberg and like, uh -huh. the Dalai Lama were hanging out, and he was just saying how, like, the drugs basically just gave you the shortcut but didn't give you the experience you needed to be able to deal with it. Though, so, you know, it just sure. gave you the higher consciousness nonetheless but yeah you can crash crash the gates uh, you know storm the gates of heaven as it were you know it's good like, book <laughs> it's a good book and it's a great concept you know it's like I don't think we need that esoteric education that the higher beings want us to undergo Fuck that. Yeah. Just go. Right. Well, we have our greatest contribution to the galactic consciousness is our creativity. Right. So, regardless, just I think stick one with of that. the things that um, that I got from the Salvia, and also from looking at my chart um, recently, is that uh, something that I, I thought or somebody a voice in my head told me was that uh, they chose me because of my ability to endure pain. And this coming year has got all kinds of really difficult chances involving Uranus and Pluto and Neptune and Saturn. They're all transiting something. And then for a week I have Jupiter transiting my natal Jupiter and uh, apparently that's like the magic time to like get a project going or, um, or have a party or definitely have a party <laughs> yeah it's like sometime in May nice did you get the date I've got the date yeah well let's let's leave it to there and let's Let's get back together around that date, and we can talk about what's, what we're going to do for that. Okay. All right, cheers. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. Are you still doing the podcast?